Right, so I'm here today with a very special guest, uh, Pete Cowan. So some of you my juniors may not know him just because uh, you're not out uh, on the world scene. But Pete's been out there for a long, long time, over 300 uh, wins at the highest professional level, including 13 majors. So if there's anybody who uh, knows this topic, it's Pete. But um, just tell us, Pete, a little bit about what you believe separates really good players from the elite world-class players. Uh, number one, belief. Uh, number two, they don't get stage fright and they can cope with adversity better than anybody else, really. Uh, so I always say to the kids, you, you've got to learn the three R's in golf. You've got to respect yourself, which is really belief in yourself and not show disrespect to yourself by snapping clubs and throwing clubs and disrespecting people around you. You've got to respect the people that helped you get there, your mother, your father, your coach, you know, your mentor, your teacher. But the most important R is you've got to be responsible for your own actions. It's not always somebody else's fault. So, yeah, I would say if you live your life by the three R's, you'll be fine. Can you just expound on, you know, a little bit of that first one, the belief uh, and some of the stories we've talked about over the years about um, even guys in training and, and other parts of life in the military, that sort of thing? Yeah, well, I've uh, got a very good friend who's been in the uh, Special Forces um, for 22 years. And uh, we went to see him uh, a few times and talk him, he talked us through what happens with uh, the special training and uh, how they actually never give up. And uh, at some stage, you know, when you're doing the training, you've got your weights on your back, you go through the, what they call the, uh, the Brecon Beacons in, uh, in Wales. And... Uh, they never ever give up and if, if you give up you'll not get through to the next stage so it's one of those where, where there's no give up and sometimes you've got to go so far that you actually pass out and then you know you'll get to the next level at least if you do that and some people don't survive that pass out that's for sure and so how do you see that play out in terms of um golfers what what are signs of giving up to you either in their training or when they're playing or that sort of thing uh, well, you know, it, it, a lot of the time uh, I, I think players don't actually spend enough time being good practices, good, you know, players play more often. And if I'm prepared to spend three or four hours in a bunker working out how to actually play better bunker shots, I don't see enough kids, that's just one aspect of it, the bunker play, I don't see enough kids wanting to do that and spending the time to actually improve themselves. So I think going the extra mile and you know putting the extra effort in, which we always said about the, the elite performers, like the elite athletes, they'll train when they think their opponent's training to make sure that their opponent isn't getting the better of them during the next competition. One of the things that we've discussed together is just, uh, you know, there's so many different ways uh, to play golf. Um, there's no best routine. There's no best way to swing. but. You know, if you were boiling it down, what commonality do you see amongst the elite players, even from a swing perspective? Uh, the only thing I see, the common denominator I've seen over the last 50, I've been in golf 57 years now, is that when the best players are playing the best golf, the delivery position matches the intended shot they had in their own mind. So the delivery position is key to me. Understanding your delivery position and make sure it matches what shot you're trying intending to play and they all do it slightly differently but that's what happens to them all when they're playing the best and when you say delivery position because some of my students may not understand how does that differ from the impact position well impact just happens in a millisecond so you've got to really maneuver the club into a position that allows impact to happen correctly everybody's trying to manipulate impact but manip impact should be a consequence of the delivery and then obviously the continuing turning body stabilizes your impact. Okay, and just uh, if you're going to give one kind of closing thing to uh, most of my viewers are going to be, you know, three to four handicaps, um, maybe scratch, but going from there down to, you know, being able to play for a living, uh, any special advice you'd give them? Well, I, I would make sure that you're actually t uh, practicing more productively. I see far too many people standing on the range and not practicing product productively and you've got to remember that the game is about movement creating the correct movement so you've got to understand what movement you're trying to create to create the shot that you want so 
moving the club, moving your body, all those things. You have to learn those. It's not all about just simple playing positions in the golf swing. It's about moving the club into the correct position and then continuing to play the shot. There you go. So if you want a great, uh, a great game, take it from the wisdom of Pete Cowan. Thank you very much, buddy. My pleasure. Oh.